In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I make these 3D dark and darker thumbnails. My last video was very outdated and people seem to be running into a lot of problems because the game has changed so much. So here's an updated guide on how I make these thumbnails. So let's go over the programs that I use to make these thumbnails. First, you're going to need Fmodel. Fmodel is a program where we rip files from the game and that's how we're going to be able to make these models. The next thing we're going to need, of course, is Blender. Blender is a 3D editing software that's going to let us import the dark and darker models and animate them. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Blender 3. The most recent version is Blender 4, but the add-on we're going to be using to import the models is for Blender 3. So how you do this is you go down to Properties, Betas, and then change it from 4 to 3.6. The next thing I use is Shader Map 4. Shader Map 4 lets us get a normal map texture. That might be confusing to you guys. It's okay, don't worry about it. I'll explain later. Next, I use a program called Upscale, which is an AI image upscaler. You can throw your textures in here and it'll upscale the textures and make them look a lot better. Or what you could also do is if you wanted to put a spell in your thumbnail, you can grab a spell, drag it in here, upscale it. Once that's finished, you see how it's very low resolution and it will look really bad in your thumbnail. Now you see with the upscaled version, it looks a lot cleaner and a lot more high quality. Next, a photo editing software. I unfortunately use Adobe because, because I have experience with using Adobe products. I suggest you look for other editing softwares because Adobe is horrible. So do your research. But if you want to look for free versions, just be very careful with downloading things off the internet. Next, you're going to want to download this US map file. We're going to import this into F model, and this allows us to actually be able to download the models from Dark and Darker. There will also be an AES key, which will be down in the description. You'll also need that. We will need that till later. And finally, you'll need this add-on. This add-on lets us actually import whatever we download from Fmodel into Blender. It only works for Blender 3. This will not work with Blender 4. So make sure you are on Blender 3. All right, so let's get started. Hop into Fmodel. Your Fmodel will not look like this. So what you're going to have to do is we're going to go to Directory, go to Selector, and you're going to add Dark and Darker. So you're going to click this Oh, sorry, you're going to click this ellipses and then you're going to look for wherever your dark and darker is located. It's going to be in different places depending on which launcher you use. I use Blacksmith, so that is going to be in uh, Program Files, Iron Mace, Dark and Darker, Dungeon Crawler, and then Select Folder. For Steam, that is going to be in Program Files 86, and then go to Steam, Steam Apps, Common and then dark and darker dungeon crawler and then select the folder and once you've done that you can uh, add game and then make sure the game is on ue53 you're gonna click ok then you're, we're going to input the aes key you're gonna copy and paste that into here click ok go to settings you're going to put the output directory to wherever you want all of these models saved Change the update mode to stable. Make sure the UE version is on 5.3 because it will not work. And then you're going to check mark this local mapping file to enabled. And you're going to input wherever you save that US map file. You're going to click OK. And now everything should work. What we're going to do next is change this loading mode to all so we can look at all the files. Press load. Now we can go into dungeon crawler, go into content, dungeon crawler. And now here are all the files to import a model. We're going to need all of the body parts and the armor, the weapon and whatever. So let's go into characters. We're going to start off with the head, go to meshes, go to class. Let's do a fighter, go to packages. And then anything you're downloading for models, gear, weapons, whatever, you're always going to want to download the SK underscore whatever the item you're downloading. All right. So we're going to look for the head, which is right here. Right click, save model. This should take a couple seconds. 
All right, now that's done. I'm gonna put everything in this folder just so it's easy to access later. Let's go out. We're going to need textures for this head. So if we scroll down, there's gonna be a texture folder. We're gonna click renewal. We're gonna look for the fighter head, which is down here. You're gonna download the D texture, right click, save texture. We're gonna exit out. We need texture for the hair. So we're gonna click here, go to packages. We're going to download the D texture right here. And we're also going to download this G texture right here. So now let's move on to the gear. Let's close these folders so we can see better. Let's go to items. We can go to armor. Let's go to chest piece. And then let's look for a chest piece we want to put on. Let's go with a light Akitan. We can click that. Download the SK version. Okay, back out. And then we'll go to hands for the gloves. We can put on some rawhide gloves, for example. Or packages. Download the SK version again. Okay, we can back out. And then now, if you want to put in a weapon, we can close that down. Let go to weapon. Let's put in an arming sword. Click that. And now there are two SK uh, models. The 7001 is the unique version of whatever you're looking at. So you can see they're all numbered. It goes from the poorest quality to the highest quality. So whatever the two poorest qualities, common, uncommon, epic, legendary, and so forth. We're going to just download the basic arming sword. And then these models come with the uh, textures as well as the model. So make sure you have those uh, textures available. Now that we're done with that, let's close out and go to Blender. All right, so now you open Blender. Let's click on General. Let's delete this cube. Now you're going to install the add-on. So go to Edit Preferences, and then you're going to Install, and then go to wherever your add-on is. Mine's right here. Click Install Add-on, and then you're going to search for a PSK. Then you're going to check mark this. And after that, it should be installed and ready to go. So let's go to file, go to import. You should have these two options, skeleton mesh and skeleton animation, PSK and PSA. And that's how you know it worked. So let's go to skeleton mesh and let's get these models to Blender. We're going to import the head, the light Akitan, and the rawhide gloves. All right, so now that we got our model into it, let's start texturing it. So you're going to want to click on the head. We're going to scroll this up a bit click on this and then we're going to want to go to shader editor use nodes scroll up so we can see and then you're going to want to come over here to material and now we have the uh, head fighter highlighted so now we're going to go back to wherever our head textures were all right so our head textures right here we're gonna drag and drop that in there and then you can do color to base color and then you can see that the texture is now in and this is how it looks like. Now in the previous video, I set up nodes with a D texture, an ORM texture, and a normal map texture. After numerous updates of Dark and Darker, now they replace that with an ONR or an MNR texture, which I'm not familiar with. And using only the D texture, you see it's, it's not bad, but it's not super textured. So how to get a normal map texture like I was talking about in the beginning of the video, we're gonna wanna open up Shader Map 4. So once you open up Shader Map 4, this is what it will look like. We're gonna put our D texture and drag and drop it into there. Once it's finished, we're gonna click on this purple texture. This is gonna be our normal map. And then we're going to click the save button and then save it. Now that's saved and now we have a normal texture right here. We can drag and drop it into Blender. Now you can click Shift A to open up this menu, look for normal map, and then you do color to color, normal into normal. And now you see it's a lot more textured. We can change this color space to non-color. And now this is what we have so far. So now I'm going to repeat that process for the Akitan and the Rawhide gloves. So I'll see you guys after I'm finished.
All right, so I got everything textured and this is what it looks like. Again, if there was no normal map texture, this is what the chest piece would look like. It looks a little low quality, a little cartoonish, but once we put in that normal map, it looks a little bit more realistic and a little more detailed. So that's why we add the normal map into there. Now, sometimes the clothing or maybe body parts or other things will clip through other clothes and stuff like that. Like you see with the rawhide gloves, if this happens and if you want to fix this, we're going to click on the gloves and this is how I do it. I go to object mode. We're going to switch it to edit mode. And then what you could do is just highlight all of the uh, rawhide glove that's overlapping with the Akitan and then we're just going to delete it. All right. So now that I'm done deleting that, there's probably a non-destructive way that's a lot better to do, but. That's the only way I know how to do it. So there we go. You can see now that it's not clipping as much through the clothing. Now for the hair and the eyes, it's a little bit tricky. Let's get on with the hair now. So we're going to go back and click on the head. And if you're in material, you want to go to the hair tab, use nodes, and then we're going to input the uh, textures. Now we're going to have to work with Photoshop here, but let me just show you uh why that is for a second. If I put in the D and the G textures, I'm going to put the D texture into uh, color, into base color, and then color, and then this uh, color into alpha. Now it looks a little weird. Um, to fix this, you wanna make sure you're in the material tab. We're gonna scroll down and blend mode and shadow mode, we're gonna change this to alpha hashed. And now the hair textures are really weird in this game. You can see it's not very visible. So we're going to need to go into Photoshop to fix this. So if you got the uh, G texture here, we're going to right click on the G texture. We're going to open with Photoshop. So it opens into Photoshop. We'll wait for that to load. So you can see that the uh, hairs right here are really dim. This is making it very invisible. So what I do to fix this is I'm going to make these strands of hairs brighter. So I'm just going to add stuff to try to make it brighter. We're going to do a levels. We're going to make it right okay and then i'm gonna go to filter raw filter and i'm just gonna just try to make this as bright as i can increase the exposure contrast highlights just kind of play with these settings a little bit all right now that we are finished we're gonna go to file export quick export as png and then we're gonna save it in our folder here now we'll put in the new photoshop texture we're gonna put this color into alpha and then you can see it now it is a lot more visible it still looks a little weird but it's a lot better than having most of the hair missing so um it's just it is what it is and you don't need to put in the normal map texture if you want a little bit more detail you can but for the hair texture we can just put in the g and the d textures and we should be good so now let's get on with the beard we're gonna do the same exact thing with the beard we're gonna drag and drop our textures in there all right and then again we're gonna change everything to alpha hashed and now this is what it looks like so now for the eyes if you use the eyes from the files they're really big I just took a texture and I made it really small to fit the eye. You could download it from my Google Drive link or you could just find an eye online and then kind of mess with it in Photoshop to fix this problem. So I dragged and dropped my eye texture in here and we're going to put color to base color. And now this is another problem that people have. You can't see the eye textures and that's because there's a layer covering it. So if we have the head highlighted, we're going to go to edit mode. And then we're going to delete this layer that's covering the eyes. So now you can see that the eye is showing. All right, now that I deleted everything, we can go back to object mode. And now you can see that the eye textures are in. And this is how our character looks so far. Now, I would just save this model right here just in case if anything happens or if you need to go back to this base, you have it saved. So we're going to save it. And then now what I like to do when we start porting an animation, I shift click each individual part. So the body, the gloves and the head. And when it's highlighted like this, we're going to right click and then join. Now, when we put in an animation, the entire body is going to do the animation instead of just one part. 
Now, before we add in the weapon, we're going to add in an animation and then put in the weapon. So let's go download an animation from F model. So we're back in F model. Let's go to where the weapon animations are. You can go to weapon. We use the arming sword animations. We're going to look at what animation we want. Let's just use the first animation right here. We're going to right click, save the animation. All right. And if you want to use any other animations, you can scroll through the weapons, look for other weapon animations, or also in the characters tab, go to player, go to common animations. We have a bunch of different animations like the campfire emotes, um, other emotes besides that, that are in the shop. We got the lobby emotes. You can dig through F model and look for anything that you're needing to. So we're going to close that out. We're going to click on the body. We're going to go to file import animation this time. And then you can see we got our army sword right here. And then you can see that we have our animation. If we click this button right here, go to graph editor or sorry, not graph editor timeline. And then we can scrub through this and you can see he's doing the animation. Let's leave it right there. That looks like a good spot. Now let's bring in our weapon so we can go to import mesh. Let's bring in the arming sword. Now the arming sword doesn't follow animation. So that's why I'm doing it this way. We're just going to slot it into his hand like this. We're going to go move it into here. And then if you want to make it smaller, you can click S and then drag it down to make it smaller. And then we can go rotate it if we need to. All right. So now this is how it looks. Now we got to texture the arming sword because now it doesn't have a texture. So we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to go back to shader editor. We're going to use nodes. We're going to drag and drop this texture right here that we have available. Drag that in there. And then we're also going to need the normal map. And now we have our arming sword. Now, if you want to edit this pose right here, what you can do, we're going to shift click all of these and then you we're going to switch it to pose mode. And from this one, you can kind of edit whatever animation you like. So you can see we can move the arms around. We could put this arm down. Find the uh, the elbow joint right here. Kind of bring that down. We can do the head kind of uh, shift the head around if we can find the right node for it. There you go. We can kind of turn his head a little bit. You can play around with the pose and kind of make whatever pose you would like. And that's pretty much how you model it. Now for other things we need uh, we need lighting. So we're going to bring this light down here and then we can copy and paste these lights and then kind of fix the lighting here. Okay. Now you can see that he's now well lit and then we can go to this camera, move it over a bit. You can go into a uh, camera view, press G to move, R to rotate, do all that stuff. All right, so this is what it would look like once we render the image. Um, I'm going to fix the arm a little bit so it looks a little better for the thumbnail. I'm going to do the same thing, highlight all of those, pose mode. We're going to lower down the arm a little bit. We're going to hold it like this. And then we got to change the uh, position of this arming sword. Let's see how it looks. It's clipping through the hand a little bit, so let's fix that. Now this is how it looks like. I could spend a lot more time to make it a lot better, but this is a quick tutorial. So this is what we have so far. Now to render this out, we're going to click on this render button right here. We're going to change the render engine to cycles. We're going to change this device to GPU compute. So it uses your GPU. Then we're going to click on denoise. So it takes out all the noise. I go to light paths. I change these to six and then go to film and then click transparent. And then when you render this out, it's going to be a transparent image. 
Another thing I like to do to make the lighting a lot better is if I go to object right here, switch it to world. We go to this tab right here, the world tab. We click on this yellow button. We put in an environment texture. What we can do is we can open up an environment texture, which is located in the blender files. So if we go to program files, go to steam, steam apps, common blender. And then once you're here, we're using 3.6, go to data files, studio lights, uh, world. And then you have these different environments. We're going to use this sunset one and then you open the image and then you can see that the lighting is so much better and the picture looks a lot cleaner. If you want to look at the other environments, you can click this button and then kind of scroll through what the different lightings look like. All right. So if you want, we can save again. We're going to save that. Now we're ready to render this thing out. So before we render, since we changed the pose ourselves, what it's going to do is when we render out the image, it's going to go back to the actual animation like this and it's going to look wonky. So how to fix this is we're going to exit that out. We're going to click on the actual model himself. We don't need to click the weapon. We can click on the model and then you can go to object, apply visual geometry to mesh. And now if we go to render, render image, now the animation pose actually stays as is. And now we just let it render it out. Now, since that's done, we can go to image. We can go to save as and then save it wherever you would like. All right, now let's open up Photoshop. This is what I do. We're going to open up a new file, a 1920 by 1080, create. Let's import our render. All right, we have our import. We have our render imported. We're going to actually upscale it a little bit so we can lift them up a bit. Eh, we could put it like right there. That looks fine for now. He looks a little dull. So what we can do is we're going to go click on filter, go to camera raw filter. And then you could play around with these settings yourself. So we're going to increase the lighting just a bit, the contrast just a bit, and then adjust it to however you like it. So now this is what our render looks like. Now I'm going to go over all the things that I do to make my thumbnails. You know, you can do whatever you like, but feel free to take any inspirations of what I do for my thumbnails. We're going to add a drop shadow, of course, to the model. And then the backgrounds that I like to use is if you look into F model, you can actually look, find the, uh, go into the UI and look for the loading screens. And I like to use the, uh, ice ones because it's very bright and blue and very vibrant. So I'll just throw in this one. We'll put that in the background. Control T to uh, scale it. And then uh, we're going to go to filter. We're going to go to Gaussian blur. Give it a nice blur. There we go. And then we can put in some text. So press T. We'll do thumbnail. We're going to resize it. And then what I like to do for my text is we're going to put a drop shadow, a stroke on it, and then we're going to go to gradient overlay. And I like to put this yellow and I like to put this yellow uh, overlay, which looks like this. It's a yellow all the way to the far left and orange on the far right. Okay. And then we're going to resize it. We might have to resize, we might have to move over the model, but this is fine for now. All right. So if you want to add text, there's the text. I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to move this. Uh, I'm actually going to move this model a little bit. There you go. That looks a lot better. Now I like to add in this kind of frame to the background to make it look 3d. What I do, I'm going to click this button to make a new layer. I'm going to go over to the rectangle tool and then drag this rectangle. And with this, you can make these curved edges like this. Right click, make selection, click OK. We're going to paint bucket this in. Control D to deselect. We're going to double click this to open the layer properties. And then we're going to 
turn down the fill opacity all the way down, put in an outer glow, and then the settings, you put it at 100%, put the spread and the size all the way up, click OK, and then what you can do is Control T, and then hold Control, and then drag these down a little bit. Kind of make them all even. And then I get to drag this layer all the way at the bottom, just above the background layer. And then you can see you can kind of got this cool 3D effect. That's that's just what I like to do. And then if we go all the way back at the top, you can even add more brightness. You can add uh, vibrance. Just make your thumbnail pop out. Of course, this is a little too much. So we're going to just drag those down a little bit. We're going to make it pop out like this. And then what I even sometimes like to do, this would be a great situation, is take these two text layers, right click, we're gonna rasterize the layer style, and then we're gonna add another drop shadow to make it pop out even more. All right, and that's basically it. And that's how I create my 3D thumbnails. What I like to do in some of my thumbnails, like if this text wasn't here, and you just wanted your character in the whole entire thumbnail, but you want to add some cool effects, you can go onto Google and look for effects. Let me give you an example. So I have all these effects right here. Let's say if you wanted to put it in a fire effect, we can go to something like this one. We'll drag and drop that in there. Now what I do is we're going to click this layer mask, click on the brush, make it black, and increase it and then kind of delete all of this. And then you can even add some sort of fire effect like this. And then you can edit the layer styles. You can kind of play around with it to see what you like. We can even go to the brush, uh, turn down the opacity a little bit, click on the layer mask and kind of dim it up a little bit, but make the middle brighter. Something like that. It's very fast. I can make it look a lot better, but this is kind of just to give you an idea of what you could do with your thumbnails. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're having problems with anything, just leave a comment down below or you could join my Discord to ask any questions and I could try to help you as best as I can. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see all of your guys' thumbnails.